Hey there, welcome to day 18. In this one, we are gonna be creating a price monitoring service. That is, we're gonna open up a e-commerce webpage and we're gonna find products that we're interested about and then we will actually monitor the prices that they are. As in, we'll be able to run this at any time and it will update recent prices and the price list for those things. Now we're gonna be using amazon.com for this and of course, Python. So let's go ahead and jump in. And for us to get started, what I'm going to do is actually jump in to VS Code into our project here, and I'm going to make a new folder for day 18. And inside of day 18, we're going to make a virtual environment. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal with control tilde. And we're going to go ahead and CD into day 18. Now, there's a few things that I absolutely want to install um, for this. So I typically use Python pandas requests request html selenium and jupyter notebooks all for actually doing the web scraping portion or at least preparing web scraping portions because monitoring pricing is all about web scraping right so we have to open up a web page scrape the price and then report it back and all those other packages will help me do that so let's go ahead and do pip env install jupyter and as uh, requests requests that dash html selenium and hit enter so we'll start off with something pre pretty basic where we just pick a product on amazon.com and then grab whatever that product's price is and then we can turn that into an actual function and then every time we need to run just that one single pro product we will be able to do that and then we're going to expand that a little bit further and actually grab links from any given category for various products so let's say for instance you go to a categories page and you want to get all of those popular products that are on there. We'll be able to grab all those links and then also monitor the prices for that. Now, I'm not sure how practical it would be to do all of that unless you are really adamantly trying to buy all of the latest things on uh, popular prices. But this is much more about just getting very comfortable doing web scraping and using various methods on how to do that. So I'm going to let this finish and we'll come back. Okay, so now that it's done, we'll go ahead and do a pip env run Jupyter Notebook. Of course, this opens up a web browser for me. So inside of here, I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder notebooks. Okay, so in here, we'll go ahead and make a new one. And this is gonna be just one single product scraper. So let's go ahead and find a single product. So I'll go onto amazon.com and I'll just look for a fairly simple product to find. I want an actual physical product as well. So I'm gonna go down into sports and then maybe like exercise and fitness and just grabbing something rather large. So let's grab a treadmill or a bike, you know, whatever it ends up being. The main thing is we wanna make sure, of course, we have a title here and the price is actually displayed. It doesn't say add to cart to see the price or see these other buyers. Uh, so this is now gonna be the URL I end up using. So we'll go ahead and designate that, okay? Of course, you can pick any of them because what we're gonna do is pretty simple. Um, so inside of here, I want to just grab the element for the title and the price. So first the title, we'll go ahead and inspect the element here. And we've got product title, ID of product title. Well, that's simple. So that's gonna be our product. Let's just call it our title lookup. And this is going to be hashtag product title. Uh, that's also like the CSS selector. So you could call it selector as well. I'll leave it just in as product title. And then we'll call price lookup. And it's also gonna be a hash. And then if we go in here and inspect the element on this price here, we should see our price, product block, our price, okay? Uh, so every once in a while, you'll have other elements in here, of course, right? So shipping message, uh, price shipping message, you might even have a striked out price, but price block, our price, is the price that the user or the customer would end up paying uh, for that. Okay, so I've got three elements here now, a URL and a few things to look up. So let's go ahead and do some imports, and I'm gonna first do the imports that I normally work with. I normally just jump into using Python requests and then from requests, 
from requests underscore HTML, we import the HTML class. And then I want to actually look up this URL. So R equals to requests dot get that URL. And then my HTML string is going to be R dot text. Okay, so we could actually print out that HTML string uh, just to make sure. Okay, so um, the one of the things that it, it likes to give right off the bat is automated access. It like already warns you about automated access to Amazon. So the thing about this is we already see that it's giving me a warning, which is really good indication that I probably am not going to want to use Python requests. Uh, so let's actually keep going down using requests, though. I'll explain why in just a moment. And we're going to go ahead and make an HTML object using, of course, the request HTML. And then I'm going to pass in that HTML string there. My HTML string is set to the HTML parameter. And then when we do that, I can actually do, you know, like dot find and then our lookups. So the first one I'll do title lookup and this should only have one. So we'll say first equals to true. I hit enter, nothing shows up, okay? So by default, Amazon's not gonna just make it super easy to actually scrape it. Like they want you to use their API because they do have API for all sorts of services. Uh, but in this case, I wanted something that I can use across services, not just Amazon, but in other places as well. And maybe just change how my lookups work on other places, but still have very similar methodology. Um, so what I need to use actually is Selenium. Okay, so Python request is not working, obviously. So what I want to do then is actually comment this part out and just say requests is not working. That, of course, doesn't mean that these other things will not. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab Selenium. Now, if you're not already familiar with Selenium, go ahead and check out day 16. We go over the installation process for Selenium because it does take a little bit more than just pip install. You basically need to install the web driver, the Chrome driver for it to work. So we're going to go ahead and import the web driver from Selenium. And then we will initialize it. So uh, it's really simple. It's just. Let's go ahead and insert above here. I'm going to go ahead and well, actually, I'll also make a headless version. Now, I didn't cover the headless version, uh, but what this essentially means is that we can have it run without a web browser opening for us. So if you went through day 16, a web browser opened and we saw all the automations happen in real time. Uh, but I just want to go ahead and import the options for Chrome for headless. So the first thing I'll go ahead and do is say options equals to options and then options dot add argument and headless. So you can add all sorts of options in here as well. So if you wanted to emulate a mobile web browser, you could you could add those in there as well. Uh, it's just not something I'm gonna do right now. So driver equals to web driver dot Chrome and options equals to options. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make sure everything's imported. And if you have any errors here, that means you didn't have Selenium selected or installed correctly. So make sure you definitely have that installed because uh, that of course is something we will absolutely need to use here. Okay, so now what I wanna do is actually go to this URL uh, and open up, so we will go driver.git and the URL. Okay, so it's gonna open up that in a web browser. So it's gonna be emulated like it's a real person. Then we're gonna go ahead and say the body element equals to driver.find element by CSS selector, and that's gonna be body. And then now my HTML string is going to be body element dot get attribute inner HTML. Okay. And I can print out this inner HTML too just to verify that it is actually HTML content. Uh, and, and sure enough, it is. And notice that warning goes away. Now, if I went to the very top of the page or the entire page, perhaps that warning would still be there. But my sense is that it's not going to be there uh, because it doesn't recognize it being requested. It now thinks it's a Google Chrome session that's actually grabbing it. So now that we've got that HTML string, let's go ahead and run these other things. 
And there we go. So now we actually have an element coming through. So if I do dot text on it, it actually gives me the title of this here. So product title is equal to that. And then the next thing is simple. It's just gonna be product price. And that's our other lookup, the price lookup. So let's go ahead and copy that. Mine's not letting me select it for some reason. So I'll copy that and scroll down. And let's take a look at these. So I'll just print out both of them. So product title and product price. And let's make sure that those are all ran. And there we go. So we've got our product title and product price. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually scrape products from any individual category. First thing I'm gonna do is actually duplicate the first one that we have here. And I'm just gonna rename this to two. And this is just so I don't have to copy and paste a bunch of stuff. So category products, and then I'll click and load this one up and then just delete the last you know, few things there. I might need to use them again, so I'll keep the other one actually running. But now I've got these initial setup processes that I need to actually getting my driver working. So now into Amazon.com, I'm gonna actually go into the categories for best sellers, and then I'm gonna click on any given category. So let's go ahead and just do toys and games. That's the very first one. So we'll hit see more. That will actually take us to the toys and games category link. So I can go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's call this categories and we'll set it equal to a list. The first one was toys and games. Okay, so I'm just copying and pasting that whole URL there. And then let's go ahead and go to the next one. So back into best sellers. Now I'll go ahead and use electronics. Copy that whole thing and paste that in there. And then one final one, let's go back into best sellers and let's skip a few of them and let's go to close. Okay, so copy that and then comma, paste that in there. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this cell with shift enter of course and hit categories. Let's just make sure that it is a valid shell or Let's go ahead and run this cell and then let's even type out categories here just to make sure we've got all those links. Now I know from my experience building web applications that these URLs, we don't need the entire URL. So you're gonna wanna play around with this, but typically speaking, whenever you see something like this where it's some sort of argument equals to something else, there's a really good chance that we actually don't need that. Now we definitely don't need something after this question mark. Well, I can't say definitely for every single website or web application, uh, but what we can do is actually just do a quick manual test on one of these URLs and hit enter, and we still get the exact same thing, right? So that's actually the same thing, just without as long of a URL coming through. So that means that I'm just gonna go ahead and go and delete a lot of those that say ref equals. Okay, so one of the downsides of doing web scraping, of course, is if they change how their URLs work, then we might have to revisit actually solving this problem. Like, I mean, that's definitely something you would have to do if you were using this in a real project. Uh, but now that we've got these URLs, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab one of them. So we'll say first URL equals to categories and zero. Okay, so we'll go to driver.get first URL. Of course, that's gonna give me an actual you know, page that I can actually work with. So let's go ahead and say body element equals to driver at find element by CSS selector. And it's gonna be body. And then I also am actually gonna get the HTML string for that. So HTML string, body element, get attribute and inner HTML. Okay, so then we will actually go ahead and grab 
that as an HTML instance. So we'll go ahead and say HTML OBJ equals to the HTML string stuff. We've already seen this, hopefully a lot at this point. Now what I'm actually gonna do is grab all the links. So we'll do HTML object dot links. And what we should see is literally every link that is on that page. What we actually want are specifically product pages, right? Um, so it's kind of hard to tell which ones are product page pages and which ones are not. Um, so this is actually where a regular expression is gonna make a big, big difference. So before we even get to the regular expression point, um, I can actually still iterate through all of these links and look for that same stuff of our product title and price block option. So I can definitely still do that. But what I want to do is actually reformat these links to actually have amazon.com on them. So essentially I want to loop through all these links. The first thing I'll do is say new links equals two, and then we'll do X for X in, and then we'll say if X that starts with a, a slash. Okay. So I'll go ahead and print out those new links. And now it's going to be, a, it might be a different size actual, list or it might be the exact same i'm not positive but the goal of this was to actually just you know narrow down the options that i had um, which is how this inline list listing item works okay so that narrowed it down by this just one single condition here so now that we've got those new links i'll go ahead and call these uh, page links and again we will iterate through this time I'm going to go ahead and put in amazon.com here. So www.amazon.com. And I don't need a slash. I just need to put the link itself. So X, remember it starts with a slash. So I can just put X there. And then we'll do four X in new links. We hit enter. And now what we'll see is page links that are more full URL links. Okay. So this very first one, what we can do is actually take a look at this. So we open it up. And this is a product review. I mean, it says product review on here, but we could still try and actually look for those prices, right? So we can take from our single scraper and we can still do this exact same thing. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy parts of it and we're gonna make a new function. And I'm gonna call this scrape page. Okay, or let's actually call it a little bit better than that and we'll say scrape product page, okay? And then we will just grab all of the product related items. We're essentially turning the stuff we did in that first section down to a function. And okay. And we're just gonna return product title and product price. And then all it needs to pass in is the URL itself. Now I also want to pass in the timer. So I'll go ahead and pass in time, so import time and or rather not pass in, but just have it sleep a little bit because we don't want to overload the Amazon server. So time.sleep and let's say 1.2 seconds. Now when I say overload the server, I mean we don't want to make it seem like this is an inhumane thing that's actually happening. It's a computer, it's a machine. We don't want to alert their website to that fact. And we also don't want to overload their system at all because we don't need to add extra load to it for no real good reason. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my first link, uh, first product link, or at least something I think might be a product link. And that's going to be my page links zero. Okay, so if we look at this one, again, we could open that up if we wanted to. But what I want to do is actually scrape this itself and come in here, hit enter. And you know, I, I get a, oh, a time not to find. Oops, that was, I should have ran that cell up here. Let's scroll back down and let's run that again. So I'll probably get nothing back. Uh, title lookup is not to find. Oh, uh, that's these two things right here. Come back into our other one. Probably shouldn't have deleted all those now in retrospect. That's okay. I'm gonna actually add these in as arguments just in case they ever change. So just keyword arguments to this function. 
but of course they're set to the default so I don't really need to do anything from them other than just rerun those cells and now I'm getting you know none type it has no attribute text okay so that's good so what that actually means is I can probably skip what this link is so in other words I'm gonna go ahead and now loop through all of these links and then actually use this method here into a try block so I'll go ahead and do for you know link in page links We'll go ahead and scrape that. And I'm actually gonna put it into a try block. And then we'll do accept pass. Now the things it returns are the title and price. So we would use title price. And I'll just go ahead and say that they are none and none. Okay. And then if title is not equal to none, and price is not equal to none then i'll just go ahead and print out the title and price okay so this is going to take a little bit of time and the reason for that has to do with this time.sleep but it should actually work and we should get at least some titles and prices i should actually probably also print out the link itself so we can start to look for patterns on how these product links are actually formatted so let's go ahead and run this and so it's going to go through every single page that was up here Now that's actually not preferred what would be preferred is that we actually go through all these links and verify which ones are probably valid product urls anyway now the vast majority of e-commerce applications have a very standardized way to have their products linked now a big part of the reason for this is that they don't want to change the links to these products very often because people share them all the time right so the the baseline link itself won't change that often when i say the baseline link i mean much like what we did uh, when we actually removed the refs up here these links won't change very often because again that that shareability that, i mean it's a uniform resource locator that's what it stands what the url stands for so they want to keep those as consistent as possible and being that they are an e-commerce platform their urls have to have some sort of pattern or method to them that absolutely makes sense so right off the bat i can see that i could probably get rid of the product reviews if there's ever product reviews in there i could probably just remove that right so yet another way to actually do the page links so i can even come up here to new links and just redeclare it and we can say x for x in new links if um product reviews not in x right so that alone would actually change some things for me uh, which we will take a look at once the scraping actually finishes now of course that is only one piece of the equation what is more important is to actually figure out exactly how each product url is is actually designed right to reverse engineer that on how they design this because somebody made a very conscious decision on how these products these product links were going to be linked so we'll have to actually try and do our best as far as reverse engineering them uh, but what we see now is actually some products some links actually pulling back some prices and titles and urls uh, so it's actually working as is but again it's going to take a while it has to go through all of those links it's going to open up every single one it's going to wait a second or two and then it's going to go to the next one it'll just keep doing that so while that's still running what i want to take a note of is each one of these links so i'm going to go ahead and grab the first two and we're just going to take a look at them in a little bit more detail or maybe not the first two but um let's go ahead and grab that one and then this one right here Okay, and I'm just putting them commented out just to take a look. Okay, so there's a number of things that I can for sure get rid of, and it goes all the way back to that ref before. Uh, the same thing that we saw before, so ref equals, right? So I can get rid of that, and that will most likely give me that exact same product. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this. We should see a product in here, Lego Classic Medium Creative, and it's got a price there. So going back into our scraper, that was the very top one, I believe. So let's go ahead and scroll up in here. 
and there it is. So $27.99 and $27.99. Okay. So that's the URL and that's the actual format of it. Um, so to just parse this out, this is coming from my experience building web applications and actually designing these URLs. Uh, so the first part is just the base URL, right? So we actually added that one, which was amazon.com, right? And then the next part is called a slug. This slug is what we see right here and right here. Now slugs are often unique, uh, but in Amazon's case, they might not actually be unique, right? Because they have other pieces on this. And so if I actually went to this link without that last part, I get a sorry page not found. And if I get rid of that DP, I still get a sorry page not found. So the entire URL is necessary, right? So we've got the base URL slash slug slash, well, it looks like slash DP. And if I do a quick scroll, a quick view here, I see that a lot of them are slug slash DP, okay? So I can actually just kind of be confident that that says DP. Now that also might depend on where you're located in the world. Maybe it's a little bit different there. But what I'm trying to do is not necessarily something consistent on my system, but trying to look for the pattern that would be across any system, right? And then the last one, these are what's called product IDs for Amazon. I think they're also known as the ASN number. So Amazon shipping number or something like that. Um, but that I know for sure is the product ID just because of all of my research in this actual series. That's the product ID. Now that is actually one of the real unique features of this. So there is a different product ID. Uh, and then that is essentially how this URL is designed. And again, I did some research on this and it takes some experience doing these things prior to actually being able to just look at it and know how to parse it. Uh, but that's why I'm also showing you this is because over time you will start to gain this experience and it's actually not that complicated to start breaking apart these URLs. Now that's not always true. In some cases, the application changes the URLs, although they're unique to how their system works, right? So if they changed how this looks, because they don't care about the shareability of the URL, it makes a whole lot different, right? Um, okay, so if I scroll back up a little bit, what I should now see is new links. Now I don't actually have those product reviews in here. So that alone, this one piece right here, actually will save me a good amount of time going forward. I, I actually already know that, hey, this is now a link that I can just ignore. It's obviously not gonna be product links. This one for, you know, rewards card member, probably don't need to go to that. Help customer display, probably don't need that. Uh, but again, those are making a lot of guesses. And then we're going to have to hard code a number of things. Where it'd be better off that we actually figure out what the pattern is for every product URL. So that's something that we still need to do. Uh, because I did successfully scrape the data that I was looking for on any given category, right? So if I actually looped through other categories, which I haven't done yet, but if I loop through all the other categories, you would definitely have all of those products, all the prices and all the titles for the current state, like what it is right now or when you actually scrape it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But now that we kind of want to work towards parsing the URL out to get these different parts, we need to actually go into depth a little bit more on that before we actually finish this thing off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this last notebook for category, category. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the last notebook for the category products, because I'm really gonna be building off of what we left off there. We're gonna go ahead and rename this. This one is gonna be parse URL with regular expressions or just regex. Okay, so if we scroll to the bottom, I have a note on how this URL pattern is working. So there's something called regular expressions and regular expressions are not really that challenging, but if you've never worked with them before, they are pretty challenging because they kind of look strange. So I'm gonna do a very basic version of that uh, based on what I already showed you. So I'm actually gonna rerun this entire notebook and I'll let that do the scraping and all that. So what I showed you right here was some things that I already have recognized with these two particular URLs. 
and they were from this category. I mean, yours might look different. There's a really good chance that they do look different because I already know of several different ways these URLs will look. Now, I didn't mention that in the last one because I don't think it's necessary to know until we start parsing these things out. So with this pattern in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and show you essentially how I want to actually parse this out. So it's gonna be, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and say HTTPS colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash. Okay, then something in here. And then DP, uh, like I said, I have DP on all of those links. I noticed that, that they were there. And then finally, the product ID, okay? So these two blocks right here are what I need parsed. I need the slug and the product ID. That's what I need to extract from all of these URLs. And if I can extract those things as in if they exist, then I can feel pretty confident that those are products according to how this pattern actually works. Okay, so what do we actually put into this to register that? Well, this is where regular expressions come in. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put an R in front of this and I'm going to name these groups here. So name the first one slug and the second one products. So inside of these parentheses, we wanna use a question mark P and then the greater than and less than brackets and then the actual regular expression itself. In this case, I'm gonna do slash W dash and then plus and then inside of here, we're gonna say slug. I'm actually gonna use that identical regular expression for this portion right here. And this one is gonna be product ID. Now I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but essentially what this is doing is this is gonna look for every character from A to Z, lowercase and uppercase, every number from zero to nine and also a dash, right? And the reason I knew that is because if I look at this right here, it has a number, it has a dash, it has capital letters, it has lowercase letters, right? So this command right here is actually grabbing all that. And these brackets are making sure that that's what we're looking for. And then we also wanna make sure that it even exists. And then we put it into a group called slug. So we're essentially naming this portion slug. And then, it's gonna jump over this part, it's gonna ignore that part essentially, and then look for something that matches here. And if it does matches, it's gonna look for product ID. Now I actually don't need a dash in this because the product ID, as far as I know, will never actually have a dash in it. But just to be on the safe side, we're gonna leave it in there because dashes inside of URLs is very, very common. And I would even say dashes and product IDs are also common or can be common. Now that might be true for Amazon, it might not be. So you could actually use this same method for any URL. So this is actually how you can just parse roughly any valid URL that's right here. Um, now it's not always true. Sometimes there's periods in there, right? Sometimes you need to include a period. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but that's a very baseline regular expression. So how do I actually match this? Well, let's go ahead and say my, my URL equals to you know, one of these URLs. So actually setting a regular string and then I'll call this my rejects pattern and we'll set it equal to that, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and import the regular expression library. I'm gonna to go to the very top here and import RE. Now my system is still actually doing the scraping so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit stop. I don't need to have it scrape. I already know that it was working from the last one. Uh, so with that interrupt, I should have to just rerun some of these cells again. And really the main thing is the cell down here. Okay, so the import of regular expressions and then the string that we wanna parse and then the pattern and how we wanna parse it, right? So if you look at these right now, you can see that there is some matching pattern there or hopefully you see that. So what I wanna do is then say, rejects equals to like the regular expression equals to re.compile and I want to compile my pattern. Okay, so once I do this, I can actually look for matches in this pattern with any given string. So I hit enter and now let's go ahead and find matches in this pattern with rejects.match 
Again, it's whatever the variable I named here is what I have to use here. Rejects.match and then my URL. I hit enter. I get a match object here. So it is showing me a match. Now, if I did a different URL like or a different string and I hit like, so in this case, ABC and hit enter, I don't actually get a match back. So I can actually feel confident that we can say my match equals to that. And then I can print out what that's going to be. Okay. Now again, I can come in here and say ABC, my match is none. So that's pretty cool. So that are, I already have a way to go through URLs and remove the ones that don't match this regular expression. Okay. So I'm not going to do that yet, but let's go ahead and actually take a look at the named groups. Now remember, I actually named these regular expressions. That's what this does. This actually names this block here as slug. And then this one names this block as product ID. So if I do have a match, what I need to do is actually take a look at what that match is. So we can actually just go ahead and say my match and then use brackets here and product ID. And then we can do after that one, we get we get the product ID, which is cool. And then we can actually do the slug, right? So the other name that I gave it. And that gives me those two items. So that's some basic stuff about regular expressions. Um, if this is interesting to you, definitely check out learning more about regular expressions. This is something that you may or may not use a whole lot, um, but in, when it comes to doing web scraping, you end up having to use regular expressions from time to time. And this is a good example of that. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that my data, when I actually add it into a pandas data frame, I have a little bit cleaner of data, right? So I actually could use this data right here. It is fairly clean, um, but this is going to be a lot cleaner to have a product ID and a slug and the URL. That's one reason. The other reason, again, was to make sure that we're not just scraping a bunch of pages when we really, really don't have to. So it might not surprise you that this regular expression pattern is not the only way to get to an individual product. Uh, so I found a couple others. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these in. And what we see is a very similar pattern across all of them in the least that there is a product ID in here, right? So each one of them has a product ID. So we should feel pretty confident that all of these will be actual valid products. But we can feel even more confident that once it's scraped, it's going to grab the product name and price anyway. So we don't have to worry too much about the pattern being inaccurate, right? It's just about making this a little bit more efficient and hopefully being able to grab out that product ID prior to scraping it. And of course, over time, you're going to want to improve this if you're really going to be going nuts about scraping uh, various products on Amazon. Uh, but from what we've done so far, it's really just a matter of like, hey, there's a group of products that I want to monitor. Uh, that's kind of the idea here. It's not meant to be a full on, let's monitor all of Amazon all the time type of product. Um, of course, that is possible, but it's going to be a much, much bigger project than, you know, something that's like an hour plus long. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and actually parse out a URL based off of these regular expressions now. And what I'm actually going to be doing and looking for is the ability to actually just extract the product ID. I no longer really care about the slug. It would be nice that they all had slugs, but with how these regular expression options are, there's just no way to do that. So what I'm going to do is say define and extract product ID from URL. Okay, so it's going to pass in a URL. And right off the bat, I'll just go ahead and say product ID is none. And then we'll just return the product ID. Okay, so what I need to do is actually loop through each one of these regular expression patterns on that specific URL. So for rejects string in rejects options, now what I need to do is exactly what I did up here, right? So compiling it, we compile the actual pattern, and then now we have the rejects option. Okay. And then from there, we just need to grab the matches. So I'll just call this match. Okay. So now we want to just say if match is not 
equal to none, then we will actually try to grab the product ID. So there's really a high chance that there will be a product ID if the match is not equal to none. But to be on the safe side, I'll just go ahead and do product ID equals to match of product ID. And that's of course inside of a try block specifically so I don't you know, break my loop or any sort of function that I have going. Uh, instead, it'll just send back a, a none. Okay, so that's also if I have invalid product IDs. So this would actually be a really good time to pass whatever that URL is to somewhere else to log it so you can review some of those older URLs that may or may not work anymore. Okay, so now that I've got these regular expression options, I now now have a function that I can use to clean up my new links. Okay, so I'm actually going to remove the actual scraping down a bit. So this is where I actually perform the scraping. So why don't we actually wrap this into a function too, and we'll say perform scrape. And of course it's on page links, so I'm probably gonna have to actually add a few more things into here, but for now I'll just go ahead and add in page links to that function so it doesn't just automatically run. Okay, and I'll clear out that cell with just shift enter. And then let's go ahead and take a look at those page links again. And this time I am going to actually bring these uh, down a little bit. So the actual final page links, let's go ahead and bring it down underneath that function. So I for sure have that function to like actually declared prior to running it. Okay. So now I'm actually going to go through page links, not new links. I'll just go ahead and say, for x in uh, page links if the product URL is extracted from there. So essentially we would come in here and say, we'll extract that product URL and pass in x and it's not equal to none. Now if you're new in <laughs> Python, which I'm thinking that you might be at least a little bit newer, uh, this is gonna look kind of weird even if the other one didn't so let's go ahead and do 4x in page links. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the product ID by using that extraction on the X, you know, because page links, this is just an arbitrary name, so we can also call it URL if we want. Okay, so this will give me a product ID. And all I want to do is actually just reset page links to being an empty string, or I can, you know, or rather an empty list, or I could just call it final page links. And then if product ID is not equal to none, then we will just append that actual URL there. Okay. So we could also go a little bit further than that and actually put it into a dictionary and say URL is that. And then product ID is whatever that extraction would be, which we just said, product ID. Okay, so that actually might be a little bit better because that's going to move towards uh, what we actually want to have, which will be a list of dictionaries that we can then load into a pandas data frame later. So the final page links is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look. And first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and do the length of page links and I'll set it equal or test if it's equal to the length of final page links. Now there's no way that this should be true. Like, at least it's one off, right? Because I know for sure that my extract product ID from URL, there's no possible chance that all of those page links were in there because I looked at them. We all looked at them. Uh, so this is an example of naming problems when you're doing development. So what I want to do is actually just remove everything that's not necessary any longer. I still need to actually update this URL. I need to look into that URL. I need to look at the object. I need to extract all the links in there. I actually no longer need this one. I just need the original links. Uh, so we'll go ahead and keep new links in there. The scrap product page function, I still want that one. Um, and then now the examples that I went with, I no longer need to commenting all of those examples out and my match even. Okay, so I definitely need the regular expression options, the function for it. Uh, I need all of this, or at least I think I need all of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and wrap this part right here into its own function as well. 
uh, that we can just call to get those final links. So I'll do def and we'll do clean page links. And it's going to take in page links as an argument or whatever the links are as an argument. And then we're going to run through all this. And then I will just return back page links. And then finally, I'll go ahead and say final page or rather final links or cleaned links would probably be better actually cleaned links. And that's going to be equal to this and passing in page links right here. So this, this page links, I can actually move back up next to new links because it's kind of really just grabbing all those links and we can actually call this um, in one place, right? So I can actually run all of this as one entire operation. I don't need multiple, right? Cool. So now that I've removed a bunch of those, that example code and the things that we explained, uh, I should now actually be able to grab this. All right, so let's go ahead and in our kernel, we're gonna restart and run all. Um, I hopefully see errors here because if I see an error, and I do right off the bat, uh, seeing the error shows me that, yeah, I had something in memory with Jupyter that was definitely running, which was giving these that true value. Uh, so the, the actual error itself is saying that my URL is not defined. And my URL, of course, is right in here. The extract product from ID. Uh, so, of course, that my URL was from our example. I copied and pasted the regular expression stuff from our example. We need to use the URL that's being passed into that function. So now that we've got that, yet again, I'm going to go ahead and restart and run all. And hopefully this time I actually don't have any errors and I'll actually see a link yeah, okay, cool. So that error is okay. We need, just need to change that. And now I definitely get false. And if I actually take a look at these links, uh, what I should see is of course my URLs and the product IDs that are associated to that. If there's not a product ID, if there's not a URL, it's not gonna be appended to those clean links. Um, so that also means that the final step of this is actually updating our perform scrape. Because right now it's gonna go through all of these page links. What we should actually call this is cleaned links or cleaned items, right? So clean product items, cleaned items. This should probably be called cleaned items as well. Uh, but let's just leave it in as cleaned items. And we want to set it by default to an empty list so that it doesn't error out at all. And now this is going to be OBJ and cleaned items. And then the link is equal to OBJ. Or, or rather this OBJ right here and URL. Of course, when I'm saying OBJ, I'm just talking about the dictionary that I'm just calling OBJ as in an object. And that's each one of these instances here will be considered my OBJ there. And this will actually give me that scraping example. So what I can actually do here is also say product ID and that's equal to obj product id okay so now what i can do is have another item here and say the like data extracted and put that equal to an empty list and so i can no matter what the price or title is i can actually append to data extraction and say data or rather product data equals to and we can do URL being that link. We can do product ID being our you know, product ID from the cleaned links. We can do our title and this is gonna be title. Of course, it can be none, which is okay. And then price being price. Now, what this also allows for is if it is none, I can at least take a look at that why later, right? I can, I can inspect these URLs manually and see like, hey, why is the title none? Why is the price none? Those sorts of things. Uh, and then finally, of course, this product data, I'm just gonna go ahead and append it to the data extracted. Got append that product data. Okay, so this is a better perform scrape item. We'll go ahead and hit shift enter. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and call this on my clean links. 
Now, before I actually run that, I just want to get the actual length of my clean links and maybe even the length of my original page links to see what they are, 170 and 51. So 51 is a lot more manageable as far as going through each one. Um, and that time sleep, maybe I move it down a little bit. I'm gonna move it to, let's try half a second. That's still really fast for a human to go through pages. Um, but let's just go ahead and try that and see if, uh, see if we can still scrape this. Again, we don't wanna overperform. <laughs> This is a, a good example of when we don't want to overperform. And hopefully it's actually going to print through what that data is. Now I actually didn't, I did a, I kind of messed up here a little bit. So I'll go ahead and interrupt it. And I'll go ahead and say the extracted data equals to that. And then we'll just go ahead and print out what that extracted data is. Because there's still another step that we'll want here. Okay, so, um, Ha, ah, yes, yeah, that's silly. So I actually need to return that extracted data. Yet another reason to do all of this testing. Okay, so we run that. And now uh, it's not actually scraping any longer. So uh, perhaps the product scrape is failing. I'm just going to go ahead and do kernel, restart, and clear output. And then, well, restart and run all is a good one too. We'll just do restart and run all. It might have stopped because of um, Pro, uh, Selenium. You know, when I interrupted the scraping event that was going on, that could have been because of the driver. Perhaps that closed, and that's why it actually stopped and didn't do it again. So perhaps we even put the driver in this perform scrape event itself, uh, which is not something I'm going to cover yet. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let this finish, and we'll take a look at what this extracted data is. All right, so here's our extracted data. Now we have our URL, we have a product ID, a title, a price. Uh, so this is actually looking really good. Now we could actually add additional data to this. And if you wanted more data, right now would be the time to do it because it's really hard to get trend lines from historical data when you don't have the historical data. A good example of this would be like maybe the number of ratings and the actual star rating that it is or what it is currently or at any given time this would be the time to do it if you were wanting to follow those things. Now for me, I'm just doing price tracking. And at this point, I have a bunch of product URLs already that I could just track off of those, right? I no longer need to actually scrape the category itself. But in my case, I'm gonna actually put all of that together and we'll do that in just a moment. Now let's go ahead and put this all together. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this notebook here. Of course, you can work off of the one that you might have already been working on if you want to. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it to putting it all together. OK, so jumping into that, um, what I want to do is actually turn the category portion into its own method as well. Uh, so the first thing I actually want to do is also update how the categories are used. In other words, I want to actually have a list of dictionaries here. So I'll go ahead and add a name and just use that slug and then add in a URL for that. Uh, and I'll do that for each one. Now with that done, I will loop through each one of these categories to extract all of the product links that I might want. Okay, so these product links I'm going to add, I'm going to eventually add into that same extracted data because I still want that URL and that product ID. I might not have a title, I might have a price for it, but I'm going to add them all to roughly the exact same place. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this, each one of these categories. So I need to actually convert these first few things into a scrape category. So we'll go ahead and say scrape category product links. Something like that. And this is going to be the categories that I want to actually pass in here. Of course, that's going to be what these are right here. And then I'm going to literally just use the exact same method here. So we're going to go into that first URL. And that is actually looping through these. So for category in categories. And the URL, of course, is URL equals to category.get. URL. Okay, so that's that right there. 
that driver needs to open that up. Now each loop, I'm gonna go ahead and add time at sleep 1.5. Pretty much every time I do a get call, I just add a little extra time. Okay, so that gives me that HTML string finally, and then I can grab that HTML object, and then finally the page links. Okay, I'm almost there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these other items here that I no longer need. I'm not gonna be using them. And I'll go ahead and do shift to select all these, edit and delete cells. Now what I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need is a way to clean those page links again. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert a cell above this and move my page link cleaner. So the first thing is the regular expression stuff. I'm gonna put that up here. I'll hit shift enter. I'll insert a new cell above that. And then I need the cleaned links, which was this right here, clean page links. And that's gonna be right under the regular expression there. Okay, so this is page links, but of course I want the clean ones. So cleaned links equals to the clean page links, passing in the extracted page links or the initial ones. Okay, so those clean links, I wanna actually append um, to a, another list here. So I'll say all product links and put that equal to an empty list initially. And then I'll do all product links plus equals to cleaned links. And then finally, I'll return all product links. Okay, so I didn't scrape any of those products. I just get those product links here. And let's go ahead and test this out. So I will call it and we'll say all product links, which is really all product items, right? But we'll leave it in as links just to not get too confusing if it's not already confusing. Um, okay. So that's what we're gonna use is that initial category. Categories right here. All right, so let's just go ahead and restart and clear our output for our kernel. I just want those first few things to make sure that the category scraping is actually working. And it will probably take a moment or two. So insert cell below. We'll go ahead and print out all of those links. That actually went a lot faster than I anticipated. So what I'm gonna do now is actually create a new pandas dictionary. So up here, let's go ahead and import OS, or actually I'm gonna use pathlib this time. If you're not familiar with pathlib, this will give you some familiarity. So from pathlib import path. And what I wanna do is get my current working directory. So let's go ahead and set some of the pathlib related stuff. So I'll say base dir equals to path.cwd and we'll go ahead and say data dir equals to base dir slash data. Now this is equivalent to os path dot join base dir data. As you see, that's a lot simpler. And then I can do if not data dir exists, then I'll just do data dir make dir and exist okay equal to true and the os path equivalent is os path dot exists of a data directory and if it doesn't it's os dot make ders data directory exists okay true okay cool um so now that i've got that let's go ahead and just say uh product or category links rather or category product category links probably better and output and this is going to just be the data dir and this is going to be products.csv or cat products category products okay and then i'll also make another one and just say products output and this is just going to be the general one now to be more efficient, we might have multiple CSV files, especially if we have a lot of categories, uh, but I'll leave it in as that. Okay, so now I've got these product category links here. 
what I'm going to do is turn all of these product links into a data frame. So DF equals to, or let's call this category DF equals to PD dot data frame. And we'll pass in all product links here. Okay. Oh, pandas is not defined. Let's import pandas. Pandas as PD. All right. Let's try that again. Okay, that seemed to work. We can just check it by df.head. Got a URL and a product ID. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So to CSV, and it's gonna be saved into our product category links output. And we'll just go ahead and say index equals to false. We don't need to store the index essentially. Okay, so I run that, and if I look at my notebook, I'll see that there's a new data dictionary here, and now I've got category products. Okay, um, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and delete some of these other notes from older items here. Go edit and delete cells. Okay, so that's running those categories, that's getting all the categories themselves. Uh, so really, we probably wanna call it its own function as well. So uh, let's go ahead and do define extract categories and save. Okay, so all product links and then all of that stuff. Now, of course, I could actually pass in the categories themselves. Um, okay, and I'll do that or category being that empty list. Okay, so that's a way to actually run that function all into one. Cool. And we can run it again, should work. So now uh, what I need to do is actually go through all of those items. So everything in category products, and then now extract and save that as my final data, right? So whatever's in here. So what that means is that I actually am not gonna do it at the same time. I'm not gonna extract all the product links and then run each product scraping event as it happens, right? So in other words, when I get a categories product link, I'm not gonna also get all the data related to that product right then and there. I'm gonna do these as two separate processes. Um, so the next thing is then I need to actually grab all of those links, right? So every link that's inside of that newly created CSV file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do define, um, let's call it, well, let's first off just add in our data frame. So pd.readcsv, so I get this error that I've got no columns to parse from file. And if I go into the CSV, then empty CSV file. Okay, so this means that my extraction or something related to my extraction and saving was incorrect. So this up here, and there's the culprit. So I actually didn't pass in the original categories that I had. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass those in to that function call. And let's try it again. This time it should take a little bit of time to actually run. And now I'll go ahead and actually trigger that read CSV. So what I need to do once this is done, I see all the URLs. Um, I actually now just need to run through this, right? So this is very close to something called apply inside of pandas. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this exact same method here and I'll bring it above. And now I'll do row scrape event. Okay, so this is gonna take in the row now and it'll go args and keyword args. So it's gonna happen on each row. Each row is roughly what this is right here. But I don't need all of that, of course. I just need some of it. And the sum of it that I need is this right here. Go ahead and delete all that. And we need to return the row and get these things right here. Of course, it's gonna be row and instead of object. The title and price is what we just need to add. So row, title, equaling to title, row price, equaling to price, if there is one, 
And then I'm also going to do row timestamp and I'll set a timestamp in just a moment. Okay, so that means that in here, I'm going to do df.apply and that row scrape event. And then I'll do access equals to one. Let's make sure that that row scrape event is in memory. So let's run that cell and we run the df apply now. And this should actually apply to every single URL. It's going to go line by line and eventually we'll have all of those URLs scraped along with a placeholder for timestamp. Okay, so while that's running, I'm actually going to go ahead and import date time to create our timestamp. Scrolling down and for our timestamp event, which will be right here, we're going to go ahead and do date and time dot date and time to now that timestamp. So that should give us a timestamp uh, related to this scraping event. Okay. This is going to go row by row and it will take a good amount of time, mainly because of how our scrape product page actually works, right? It goes up um, every half second, time and a half. Now that's the category. Every half second, it's going to go to a new product page. But yeah, this will take its, a good amount of time, uh, but after it's done, it will have all of those products actually done. So let's take a look at that once it is finished. All right, so I actually stopped it a little early so I could actually see the results here. And what I got is my URL, my product ID, and the title. Uh, one of the things that I should have done was reset the data frame itself to that scraping event, and that's definitely something I still will do. Uh, but the point is to actually have this timestamp. And what we actually need to do is then create a new data frame based off of the output here. And then we're just going to continue to append to that one. So we'll go ahead and say products df equals to. Well, initially, I don't actually have anything in this product output. So let's go ahead and make one. I'm going to go ahead and insert and just do df dot to or rather write to CSV and index being false. Okay, so now products data frame is just going to be the PD dot read CSV. Okay, if we see this, it's probably going to be the same as the categories one, right? So it doesn't actually have the products in there just yet. Uh, so what I want to do then is after this actually runs, I'm just going to concatenate it to this one here. So final df equals to pd.concat, and it's going to be the initial one, and then the new one, which is df, which will be this right here. And then that way it's just going to add the results to that original product's data frame. And then I can do additional data on here to clean it up, right? So to CSV and the product output and index being false. Okay, so now that we've got that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do a small amount of this and I'll say DF sub equals to df dot head and the number is going to be let's say 40 and then the df sub or that final df that i'll actually concatenate to is just going to be a sub portion of this right there's just a lot of numbers in here uh, a lot of things that i would actually look up okay so let's go ahead and grab this right here df head what that does is just get the first 40 items if you wanted the last 40, you would do tail. And of course, to get the length, um, you could just do len or shape. So um, df.shape, oops, not, a, not that, df.shape. Uh, this is the rows, this is the columns. Um, okay, cool. So we could chunk it is the point of that. Okay, so we get that sub and then we run the apply scrape event. Uh, I might need to actually rerun it uh, because, oops, contact, this is concat. 
Okay. Uh, and what I'll actually see in that one is just the exact same thing twice. Okay. Which is no surprise there. Um, okay, so what I actually need to do is rerun this so that my apply method actually has the driver working because I actually interrupted it. So I'll go ahead and restart and run all. Now I went ahead and actually printed out some of the data from that row apply because it was just taking a lot longer than it should have. This is one of the downsides of Selenium. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. But I just added a second and a half to my scrape product page just to give it a little bit more time on there. It's possible that Amazon was, you know, toggling or throttling the things that I was doing. Um, so I just changed the size of the cut as well to being a little bit smaller. And as I printed it out, I was able to see that, hey, it actually went through pretty quickly and was able to produce the things that I wanted. And if I actually look at the final DF .head, um, or maybe actually let's look at the tail. Uh, what we see is, is the data that's coming through here, right? You could change the timestamp to a date time string if you wanted, uh, but I'm just going to stick with the timestamp and I could just continue to add these scraping events. Um, so the realistic thing here is I don't actually, I'm not too worried about products being repeated on here. What I'm mostly worried about is that I'm actually getting the data and I have a timestamp associated to it. Uh, one of the things I didn't actually pass was the category down to any of those links. I did actually scrape them, but I do want to actually bring that category name in. So let's go ahead and make sure that we do that. So that was inside of this. This is all product links. So instead of all product links, I just want to add one attribute to that, which was the clean links. Let's just add it in here. The clean page links, I'm gonna add in category being that category. So in these clean page links here, I'll add in category being to none. And then we'll add this here. Okay, cool. So that's certainly thing, something that I really wanted to have that I intended to have, but I just missed it. Um, and the category, you know, you might actually end up using the category URL instead of the actual category itself. Uh, so that's something else to think about too. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in just as the category itself. Okay. Um, so now what I'll do, because I have the reference to the link here, that's the main reason. If I didn't have that reference to that link, then I would certainly want that URL as well. Uh, so now with that, I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And this time I'm not going to do a subversion of this. Instead, what I'm going to do is just say df.copy and hopefully all 150 of them or so will actually run. Now, when I do actually rerun this, it's going to get new items from these categories. So in a month from now, those items are going to probably change. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them will. So that actual CSV file, the category products CSV file, this one right here is certainly going to change. It's going to be wiped out and changed constantly. Where products.csv will also change, but it's not going to change nearly as much. Now, there is another thing that I should probably consider, and that is actually looping through every single link, right? So if I actually loop through every row, um, what's going to actually happen is I'm going to redo it, right? So I'm never actually going to be adding uh, that much new data here. Instead, I'm going to be replacing all the data that's already been in there. So in this row, I want to go ahead and say scraped. Well, I want to grab the scraped item. So we'll say scraped equals to false. And then I'll do try scraped equals to the row of scraped. And then we'll do accept pass. Okay, um, scraped being false is actually a little bit harder with the CSV file. So I'm gonna go ahead and say zero or one essentially. So after all of this happens, I'm just gonna go ahead and say row scraped equals to one. Okay, and that also means that then in here, I'll just say if scraped equals to one, or scraped equals to the string of one, uh, then we're gonna go ahead and skip that. In other words, I'm gonna go ahead and just return 
the row. Otherwise, it will actually go through and do the scraping itself. So it shouldn't scrape those old ones is the point here. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart this all again. So restart and, and run all. So restart and run all. All right, so I actually interrupted this process because what I started noticing in my print statements were prices and titles not being available. So if I actually look at any one of these things, I should actually see that the price and the title is certainly there. Uh, so there's a couple of reasons why this could have happened. And I actually suspect that it was because of my driver, right? So the Chrome Web Chrome driver, um, it might have been doing the request too quickly for any given page because that page has to load fully. That might be one thing. The other thing is Amazon has some safeguards against this. Sure, they encourage you to actually buy products from there, but they're probably not going to want you to hammer their servers or any product page over and over again. And instead of blocking our IP address, it just it just throttles it. So then any sort of machine is that's trying to grab it will be throttled. Okay. So the purpose of this series or this day was not so much to just blindly scrape a bunch of things on Amazon website. It was much more to introduce you to even more concepts in web scraping and then actually practically put it to use and also see some of the limitations that we have. Like you can't just web scrape like everything all the time as fast as possible. There's limitations to your machine. There's limitations to what these services will allow you to do, which is actually a really good thing. We don't want to overload anyone's system and we don't want people overloading ours whenever we make web applications too. Um, so that's that's also an important part. Now, what I actually challenge you to do is to convert this putting all together into being one or a couple methods that take just a list of products and does something very similar, but instead of it being just blindly grabbing all kinds of products, grabbing specific ones that you're interested in, because at this point you should know how to do that. Actually, a few videos or a few sections ago, you probably already knew how to do that. Um, but that's the challenge I leave you with. Hey there, thanks so much for watching day 18. Of course, we covered a lot in this, but there might be other services or websites that you're considering doing price tracking. Please let me know what those are. I would love to check them out and give you some pointers if I can on how you might most effectively do that web scraping. And of course, if you have pointers for other people, please let them know as well in the comments. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.